Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, today as we come together, we do take a moment to celebrate the greatest gift of all. And we begin the, that celebration with a praise of a sermon series on praising God for the gifts He gives to us. As we get ready for the gift that cannot be contained. As we prepare our hearts during this Advent season, we remember that the Lord has not just given us the one gift, the greatest gift of all, but that He has prepared us. That He has given us ways to get ready for His coming. That He has given us hope. That He has given us comfort. That He has given us the promise that He is coming again. Today, as we begin our Advent series, we open up our first present. Our first gift from the Lord. And that gift is expectation. Now, you may not always think of expectation as a gift. I know that I don't. For instance, if any of you brave the crowds on Black Friday, you don't like expectation. You don't like getting stuck in crowds or at least waiting in line. Maybe you do. Maybe it's your thing. But most people don't like waiting in those lines. Or how about getting stuck in line at the bank? There's two lines that you can go through and you still sit there a half hour. Or going to Vons and waiting at the checkout. Expectation. It doesn't seem like such a gift, does it? I mean, how many of you like to say, I can't wait to wait? These days we have cell phones that, well, they can check the weather or the news. We can update our Facebook status. We can check our email. And, oh yeah, we can also answer phone calls. We like to be right on the top of things. We like to be ready. But expectation, though, also can be considered a good thing, right? It's not just a bad thing. We, waiting sometimes is good. Waiting for that first child to be born. Waiting to hear the good news, your granddaughter is born. Waiting for the good news, we're getting married. Waiting for the good news to hear that the diagnosis came back negative. Think about that. Sometimes expectation is not so bad. And today, as we look at expectation, we do take a moment to see how it's not so bad. In fact, quite the opposite as Christian people. As we look at expectation as Christian people, we can not only look at it as something that's not so bad, but can also look at it as a great gift that Christ has given to us. A gift that is probably one of the most wonderful things we have as Christians. And that's because that expectation is not simply wrapped up into waiting, but what comes with that waiting. The hope that also comes. Not just the worldly hope, I mean, that, that, that goes away. But the hope that we will one day see our Lord come. That he will come in all his glory, just as he came the first time in Bethlehem. As he came, as he led that perfect life, as he went to the cross, giving us the gift of salvation. But as we wait for his second coming, as we wait, we have a warning. And Christ does not just give us warnings lightly, does he? But he gives us a warning in Matthew. Uh, Matthew. We're into Mark now. Mark 13. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when the time will come. Matthew 13, 33. It was right in our gospel today. That warning as he's built everything up. You can almost feel the tension in the air because he's already talked about that last day as it's coming. He's been talking about to his disciples, warning them that it is coming, that the end is near. And so with these two imperatives, be alert. Be on your guard. Be ready. And he closes off the gospel. Watch. Watch. Keep your eyes open. Stay awake. Now how hard is it for us to stay awake? And I'm not talking about just during the sermon now. I mean, I'm sure a few of you guys will, you know, eyes will flutter, things like that. But stay awake. Keep your heart ready. How do we do that? What ways can we keep our hearts ready as we await Christ's second coming? It would be easy to say, well, it's been a while. We've been waiting for a long time already. It would be easy to say, well, the expectation we have, well, it's going to be long term down the road yet. Not in my lifetime. It would be easy to get caught up in the doldrums of this life. The hustle and the bustle. And I think that's sometimes where our excuse comes from. Our excuse to not be awake. Alert, ready. Our excuse that, well, here we are again. Another holiday season. Another time of season's greetings. But not a Christmas season. Sometimes we in the church, we use that as an excuse, though. We stand back. We, we, we say we're awake, but we, st we sit there and we watch. As the world happens like a panorama right in front of us. We sit back and watch as, as the community changes around us. We sit back and watch as families are deteriorating, sometimes even our own. 
And we sit back and we say, well, there's nothing we can do. It's a sign of the times. I'm waiting for the next big change. And then we're given a text like today's from Mark 13. Then we're given this Advent season. Not a second chance, but that chance to prepare our hearts. That chance to get ready. That chance to set aside, to to see with anticipation that we do have something greater. That we do have a hope to look forward to. That we do look forward to the promise of our Savior. And He may not come while we're here on earth. I know there's been plenty of predictions in that, in that vein. He may not come while we're sitting here today. But that doesn't mean we don't get ready. And so that doesn't mean we don't ask the question, how do I get ready for Christ's coming? How do you get ready for Christmas? What ways do you get ready? How do you prepare for Christ? In our church, of course, you know that we begin with the Advent season. We start off four weeks out, and we light our first candle. And when we do light that candle of hope, because we do have the the hope of the world coming, the light of Christ that will fill our hearts, we put up a Christmas tree that takes over an hour. We hang garland. We put candles in the windows. We start to hum our Christmas hymns, sing our Christmas songs. But how do you get ready? How do you prepare your heart? What types of ways do you prepare your heart for Christ's coming? Or do you prepare your heart? Do you prepare your heart for His coming? What types of things or ways that we can prepare? We talked about one, worship. Prayer. Spending time in His Word. But what about beyond those things? Are there any ways to prepare for Christ's coming? To recognize that hope. We might say, if we get caught up in our day-to-day lives, then no. There's the hustle and bustle. There's the things going on. We are busy people. We have a lot going on. We need to keep our Facebook status up to date and our emails checked. But I think our Lord, He gives us He gives us an instruction on how to prepare. He doesn't expect us to do it on our own. He doesn't expect us to imagine a way to do it. But He gives us instruction right in His Holy Word. Right in His his Word, He shows to us day in and day out how to prepare, how to get ready, how to wait. And I'll give you a clue. It's not sitting. Waiting for things to change around you. Waiting for the next big miracle, miracle to happen. That's not the way it goes. Christ has already given us the greatest miracle of all. When He was born, born of a virgin. You know, sometimes we... we, Let's back up for a moment. Sometimes we get used to that, don't we? We confess it almost every week in the creed and we say, you know, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, conceived by the Holy Spirit. We, We say that thing over and over again, but we don't look at how important that is. The miracle of Christ containing Himself coming to dwell among us. The miracle of our God loving us so much that He took on human form, but not only took on human form, but the miracle that He not even had a sinful thought. He didn't have a sinful action, a sinful desire. And then He went to the cross. But this is where the greatest miracle of all happens. That miracle when He defeats death. The miracle of His power destroying Satan's power. That miracle that fills our lives. And as we prepare, what do we do? Well, Paul gives us some advice there. He tells us in 1 Corinthians 1, Do not lack any spiritual gifts as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so with that miracle, we have all that we need to get ready. We have the strength. We have the power. And what does that mean? It doesn't necessarily have to be something that you can check off a list, mark on a calendar. No, as we get ready, as we prepare our hearts, as we do the works of the Lord, it means that we actually go and be the church. It doesn't just mean talking about the church. We have a good habit of talking about being the church. But being the church means being in our communities, being the community of believers together. It means praying for one another. It means caring for one another, making a warm dish for someone who's sick, calling someone on the phone, visiting someone you care about. It means actually stepping out of your comfort zone. 
and engaging with someone who may be lost and dying and not know Jesus Christ. And as we talked about last week, people of God, these things happen naturally for us, don't they? They happen naturally. At first, maybe we have to be intentional. But after a while, they start to naturally happen because we, because we start to see them as God working through us. As God working through our hands. And not only that, but Christ gives us His own examples. Because He didn't just be born in a manger and immediately go to the cross. But He went out to the people. He went out to those people who were on the road with a broken heart. He went out to the people who were blind, who were deaf. He went out to the people who could not speak. The depressed and the downtrodden. And He gave, brought them healing. He engaged them where they were at. He touched their lives when they didn't realize how much they needed Him. He reached out that helping hand to them. And although we can never follow Christ's example perfectly, in fact, we, we don't have a chance of even coming close to following His example. That doesn't mean that we use that as an excuse to wait, to fall asleep, to pass the guard to someone else. But instead, that means that we pray, that we take time in the seasons of Advent, the season of Advent as we get ready for Christmas, to renew our hearts, to be rejuvenated by our Lord. Because as we go to Him in prayer, we do pray those prayers, Lord, show me Your will. Show me Your guidance. Open my heart that I may love others as You have loved me. Because there is a world lost and dying. There is a world who has, has lost their way. There is a community around us. There is a community who is waiting. They may not know that they are waiting for that hope that we are. But they are waiting. They're waiting for something to change. They're waiting for something to happen. They have that same sense of expectation, but they, they are missing the hope we have. The promise that Christ will come for us. That just as He came as a baby in Bethlehem, just as He knelt down and came to this earth and dwelt among us, that He will come again. But He will not come again as a baby. He will not come again in, in secret. But He will come again in all His glory. And did you see that in our Gospel lesson for today? It's not going to be something you can ignore. It can, it's not going to be something that, you are, that people are going to say, well, I didn't know. But when He comes again, all people will know. Every person. And all at once we will know that the Christ, our Lord, that He has kept His promise. That as He comes, He is coming to bring us to Him. But the time is short. The time is short. And as we open up this present, this expectation, as we prepare our hearts for Christ's first coming, we do so knowing that He is coming again. And that those who are outside of the church, those who do not know the fullness of His promise, those who have not heard those words, I forgive you, that that day is not going to be so glorious for them. And this is the truly awful thing and the scary thing. Is that it's not just something that we play with. Hell is a very real place. And those who do not know Christ as their Lord and Savior, those who do not know Him as the babe who came in Bethlehem, who comes again for them, that is the place reserved for them. And our Lord, He does not want any person he does not want any person to, deserve, to receive that eternal punishment. And so He gives us this time. He gives us this time as we expect His coming, as we wait for His coming. He gives us this time to look beyond ourselves, to love people as He has, to open our hearts. So how do you prepare? How do you prepare for Christ? For his coming. As we look forward to his Christ coming in Christmas, as we look forward to his second coming, we know true hope. We know the true hope that one day he will call us home. One day, as he called us to be his in holy baptism, he will call us 
to be His in eternity, to receive the inheritance He has prepared before us, to receive His gift to us, the greatest gift, and that is salvation. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we are awed and amazed by Your love for us. By the miracle of Your coming as a baby. But Lord, we know that this awe is nothing compared to the awe we will have when You come in all Your glory. Lord, we pray that You would prepare our hearts, that You would prepare our minds, that You would prepare our bodies for the acts of service You have set before us. Lord, we pray that as we prepare for Your coming, that we would do so with a sense of joy knowing You are coming again. That with a sense of hope, knowing that Your promise is sure. With that hope that we will that we will join You forever in heaven. Lord, we pray that You would stir up our hearts to share the good news, that we may not grow sedentary, that we may not grow run down by the doldrums of this life, but that we may be lifted up by Your Spirit, lifted up to be a shining example of Your love, to share that good news message that You are coming and that You will be born, born of a, born of a virgin, conceived of the Holy Spirit, but not, a, not just a man, but King, Lord Almighty. In your name we pray. Amen.